Good afternoon, Bears, and welcome back to Bear News, where we tell you all about bears. I'm your host, Shelly Schwartz. And I'm Sophia Tavanello. Shelly, I'm so excited to talk to you about bears today. Polar bears, sun bears, grizzly bears, all of them. I want to learn more about bears. <laughs> I think that we should start off by talking about panda bears. That's a good idea. I, they're so cute. Well, I'm getting, I'm getting breaking news from, from the studio. A apparently, this is actually an April Fool's joke. Happy April Fool's Day. We're not talking about bears, but I bet we totally got you. Totally. Well, that was fun, but we should probably get back to news about the UNC bears and not grizzly bears. I guess so, but I still think we should talk about bears some other time. So, my name is actually Schwe Shelly Schwartz. I'm actually Sophia Tavanello. And let's get into it. This past week, early Tuesday morning around 1 a.m., a cargo ship cargo ship slammed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse, presumably killing six construction workers. Four have yet to be recovered. Authorities believe that the four victims are trapped in the tangle of steel and concrete underwater. In recent news, a team of engineers have started to slowly clear up the wreckage. This horrific human tragedy was also an economic catastrophe. As I mentioned yesterday, we need to do more work clearing the channel to move forward. This is a remarkably complex operation, and our focus needs to be on unity of command and unity of effort. The collapse is expected to result in billions of, in, of dollars of liability damage, which insurance companies will likely be held responsible for. The cleanup is currently being founded through $60 million in emergency relief funding through the Department of Transportation. In addition to clearing the debris, officials will also need to assess the damage of the cargo ship, making sure it doesn't leak fuel or sink. There are currently 22 members of the crew still on board the vessel, and it's still unclear how they'll have to remain. We'll keep you updated on this heartbreaking story. Do you like making art? Are you looking for somewhere to share it with others? Well, you're in luck. There's a new free Little Art Gallery, or FLAG for short, in Crab Hall. These flags offer a new way for students and Greeley residents to showcase and trade their art with We're all so spread out and we live in such an individualistic society that it's, it's in-person community is scary. Like, I, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna leave my house and go anywhere, you know? Um, so I think this is a really accessible option. Like, you don't have to be face-to-face -face with anyone, but you can put your art in there, you can share your art with people, and... If you're ever over in Central Campus, go see if there's any cool art you'd like to take or add. Reporter Drew Peters had a great conversation with Hall, with Hall, the creator of Greeley's first flag, and was able to learn more about her inspirations and efforts to make this shareable art space a reality. My favorite part about it is like you can share supplies in there too. Like when I was a little kid, I didn't have like a lot of money. My family didn't have a lot of money, so I know that I couldn't always get like cool diorama supplies. <laughs> like so, if I had a free little art gallery that I could come like check for supplies, like I would have loved that. We'll have more on that for you later this week. If you're an artist or you want to sell your creative work, we might have the event for you. You can sign up to be part of the UNC Art Fair that will be on Thursday, April 18th at Turner Green from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. You must be a current UNC student and provide a price and payment options for the art pieces you're selling so you can get paid. Register at the link on UNC's University Program Council Instagram page. The last day to register will be April 10th. Remember, everyone is welcome to attend the UNC Art Fair. There'll, there will be live music, a student art sale, and food trucks. Don't miss out. All right, Bears, are you up for a challenge? The departments of anthropology, earth science, and geography are hosting a native plant scavenger hunt around campus. Students are encouraged to walk around campus and stop by labeled native plant species. Each participant is required to scan the QR code that is labeled on each plant. The QR codes provide information about science and the plant that they scan. Once all plants are completed, turn them into Zerhert garden between 2 and 3 p.m. to receive a prize and be entered into an additional drawing. The native species scavenger hunt begins on April 12th at 8 a.m. As far as scavenger hunts go, I'm looking for some warm weather after all the drizzliness yesterday. Sam, what are we looking at this week? Well, yes, we had some thunderstorms roll through last night and having a chance for some more rain showers coming our way and here in about a few hours. But looking towards what's happening across campus right now. But it's currently 52 degrees out here in Greeley. 
there we are. Look, some clouds across campus right now, and we'll switch over to our weather headlines for the day today. As we have our, as I said, chances for more showers coming this evening. 70s on the way this week, and then our solar eclipse is one week away. Yes, we won't be towards totality, but we still have a good chance for some solar eclipse. But looking at our forecasted highs today across northern Colorado, 53 is our high in Greeley, 53 down in Denver as well, 40s to the north of us. But going towards Doppler radar right now, some of these rain showers are starting to develop north of us here and the rain, yes rain showers coming through there's developing north of us right now we'll go towards future cast to show you when more of these rain showers are coming our way as this is probably here in a few hours this these storms will start to develop north of us and make their way down south they'll move down south of colorado and giving us maybe a chance for another thunderstorm here are two, but I guarantee you Apple weather did not tell you this, so trust the weatherman, not your phone. But looking at the rest for our seven-day week, get you prepared. This is where our 70s come on Thursday. Maybe we can reach 70 on Wednesday, but looking nice and sunny towards this week. <laughs> and, and maybe a stray shower coming towards the weekend. We will head back to the desk after because Shelly and Sophia, what do you think about these rain showers coming tonight and 70s later this week? <laughs> I am so excited personally, I Sam. I have never been more <laughs> pumped about the weather. What can I say? Weather's fun. <laughs> Weather's very fun. But Excuse we, us for a second. We are excited <laughs> for our lovely sunny temperatures this week. Thank you so much, Sam. Are you ready to test your knowledge in the world of health, particularly in sex health? This week is National Public Health Week and sex trivia will be taking place. In collaboration with UPC and OHP, the Colorado School of Public Health at UNC will be hosting trivia at the Burger Bar Tuesday at the UC from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. I am winded. There will be free food offered at the event and winners can win some sex tax sextastic prizes as described on OHP and UPC's Instagram pages. This is not the only event this week as there will be many other activities throughout the week. To learn more about other events throughout this week, check out both Instagrams of OHP and UPC. Bring a friend and challenge each other to see if you're good at sex trivia to earn prizes and have a good time. Sophia, speaking of trivia, did you know that UNC has a birthday this week? They do. How, how old is it? We are turning 135 this week. So happy 135th birthday, UNC. Happy birthday. <laughs> so this past weekend was Easter. What did you do for this Easter? I went over to my grandma's and we had like lasagna, but in like little shells. So, oh. so good. And then this I know, like meat wrapped asparagus. So that was really good. And of course, a Caesar salad. Ooh. You gotta be healthy. I did not do any of those things, actually. I laid it down. I, I mean, <laughs> it's Sunday. It's a lazy day. Why not? That's, yeah. that's what I thought. I, yeah. felt, I felt I was due for a little taking a nap. I did also go to the Avs game, which I'll be honest. So I have now been to a basketball game and now a hockey game. Hockey fans are very rowdy. Really? I will say that it gets a lot more, what's the word for it? Amped up in there, especially when there is a fight. Mm. I'll be really honest, I was definitely going in for it. Just <clears throat> you know, so that well, was fun. There were no fights on Bear News today, but I'd say that we were pretty amped up in the studio. We were. Well, Bears, thank you so much for joining us today for this very fun newscast. I'm Sophia Tavanello. And I'm Shelly Schwartz. We'll see you next time. <laughs>